<laughs> All right, we ready to rock? Let's or go. whatever might happen now? Mm -hmm. yeah. Welcome back to New Kamak. In the last session, our heroes' extended battle against the forces of death finally came to a conclusion as they caught up with the horseman while he was trying to flee underwater through a pipe that empties stormwater into a small lake near the city's prospector camp. That was all one sentence. <clears throat> anyway, Darby saw an opportunity to snatch a golden amulet from around the horseman's neck before hacking the mummy-like necromancer's arms off, as well as one of his legs, followed by Archibald stripping him naked for reasons that were never made clear. Death appears to now be in torpor, and since the fight concluded underwater, no words were ever exchanged between death and our heroes other than a single German sentence directed at Excavo in the first moment that they encountered each other. Archibald and Excavo have both expressed the intention to diablerize death. In other words, draw out and consume his soul to inherit the potency of his blood, and in doing so, permanently destroy his soul, denying him any semblance of existence in the afterlife. Both remember that in the Camarilla, Diablerie is nearly universally considered the most contemptible, abhorrent crime possible, but given the allure... Unless the prince says it's okay. Yes, the prince can sanction... <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much literally anything to be okay. And given the allure and benefits of the act, it's not unheard of for princes to sanction it as a reward for destroying an especially heinous enemy. And in other vampiric cultures, such as in the Sabbat, Diablery is commonplace and encouraged, and consuming a fallen foe's soul is seen as a gruesome right naturally granted to the victor of combat. We go now to the banks of this unnamed lake in the woods, lit by a waxing crescent moon over the clear sky and the distant and dying campfires of gold prospectors illuminating the forest canopy with an amber glow where our heroes are deciding what to do about death. I've been playing this as if it were a waning crescent moon this whole time. I'm uh -oh. pretty pissed. That's on me. I should have given you updates about the phase of the moon. I did look at the actual phase of the moon on this day in April of 2020. <laughs> Really oh breaking God. immersion. Okay, so right now I believe that I was literally physically holding Excavo back, mm -hmm. right? You I deserve this! I deserve this! pulled her off of death. Listen, once I became the prince, we promised each other that we would always solve all of our problems with direct democracy and, and group decision making. That's what I'm trying to do! I decided! <laughs> we Get need to put it off to of a me. Vote. Augustine and Darby, what do you think? Didn't I mostly kill him? And also that big alligator from before, didn't I mostly kill that as well? Yeah, Darby should eat him. Even though he killed my best friend. <laughs> Augustine. <Yeah. clears throat> he killed a lot of people. Choose which one of us you like the best. Can't do I really have to hear from everybody? I, uh, I'm going to let the... Augustine's going to let the bear's cub decide and places the bear cub <laughs> equidistantly between them. <laughs> All right, yeah. I, got, I have one dot of animal, Ken. I'm like, I'm like making eyes at the bear trying to... Uh, uh. Can I, I don't know if I need to make a roll for this, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely... Come to Papa. Last rat. So the bear is between Archibald and Darby? And Exgavo, I guess. Since yeah, because I mean, she's technically in the proximity. Um, I placed the bear cub this. down... I also position myself equidistantly, and then uh, trying to be as sly as I can, I also produce a tomato from a pocket and kind of like <laughs> bait the bear cub towards me. Wait, towards yourself? <laughs> <laughs> You're letting the bear cub juice? Oh, the now there's bribery? Yeah, and this then, is why democracy is dead. that when it chooses you, the prince is going to be like, oh, sure, yeah, well, your prince bear cub... This is democracy. This is a delegate here. This is how they did it in in Catalonia during the Spanish Civil War. <laughs> uh, the the bear cub tries to crawl back up into your arms, Augustine. Well, everyone, that settles it. Augustine gets this one. 
Are you serious? Are you serious? Wait, wait, what? It's I'm only fair, see, guys. The bear cub chose. Well, let, let, the does bear my squirrel? cub is chose and is unbiased. Does my squirrel get a vote? And I'm just like, <laughs> take, take my <laughs> wizard hat. What? You take your hat off him? and you hear the sound of a squirrel gasping for air <laughs> as oh! oxygen rushes into this hat. I forgot you make a good point there. Let the squirrel have a vote. <laughs> this has always been a part of my political platform. I've always said that squirrels have the right to vote, not just bears. It's so dumb. I'm just like, Why yeah, all right. What is happening? Am I awake? Well, Escavo, <laughs> maybe if you had an animal companion, then you'd get an extra vote too. <laughs> what? <laughs> I feel like this would make sense to a Malkavian. She'd be like, well, yeah, okay. <laughs> so I assume my squ my squirrel chooses me. Well, the bird over there is my friend. Why not? It's between Darby and Archibald, then. Excavo, choose which one you like more. Archibald or me! Excavo. Or you can make the animals <laughs> fight each other. Say oh. what? Oh. Hmm. A squirrel versus a bear? I think not, not very I think Excavo's Malkavian delusions have crept into my head. I've just heard a a dark inclination from a force beyond <laughs> urging me to have the animals fight. No. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be just like Pokemon Legends Arceus, my new favorite obsession. <laughs> <laughs> that game doesn't January come 28th. out for years. That that <laughs> it has not even been announced yet. Yeah, it's, uh... it hasn't even been thought of. Truly revolutionary. <laughs> I'm seeing visions of a, a future far beyond. You sure, you're not Malkavian. So Archibald is continuing no. to hold uh, Excavo back so that she cannot diablerize death, and the group collectively has not decided on who gets the right to diablerize him. Is this correct? Can I use my powers to try and convince Archibald that it's mine? I don't know who it is, as long as it's not Excavo, but in the name of equality, <laughs> each of us should yeah. get one. Uh, Darby's going already for got it. One. Dar Darby's going for it to see if anybody's going to stop him. Yes, I am Darby. trying! Attaboy, my best friend again, reinstated. Ooh, Darby likes the sound of that. It's about time. Things are finally starting to go my way. Let's well, do this. I may have lost a best friend, but at least I gained a best friend in all of this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. A lot of equivalent exchange. <laughs> An so, even exchange. So really, you just ended up better than, than you was before. About the same, anyway. Uh, Excalibur, are you trying to are you trying to dominate him? Yeah. So yeah, I go up to him and start start draining his blood. At least to let me go. Who is uh, Excalibur? Who are you trying to dominate? Archibald. And what is what's your strategy? What do you do or say? I think I would just have him let me go, or have him forget why he's holding me back in the first place, so I can just go over there. <laughs> I think that's manipulation plus subterfuge, wits plus subterfuge. Difficulty is Archibald's current willpower points, which is three. And oh, uh, no. tell us, Check what what do you say to Archibald before you roll? So I say right before, why are you holding on to me? Let me go. You got that. So he lets me go. <laughs> what? What? What am I doing? Uh, he so lets I lets you go. I fucking where bolt. Are, where <laughs> I, I'm Who like, am I? So now you and Darby are both going for the body at the same time. And yeah. I assume you're both trying to push the other one off. Yeah. Um, so uh. this is <laughs> going to be... Who knows how it's going to turn out? We'll have to roll for it. Um, uh -huh. Because you're both trying to overpower the other one. I think strength plus brawl makes the most sense. Hmm. Good luck, Excavo. Um, 
let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Are mm-hmm. my stats still boosted from the fight? Um, since it did, like, just happen less than a minute ago, I would say yes. I'd say for okay. the purpose of, like, powers that last for a scene, this is still that same scene. Uh, but you boosted your dexterity. Oh, yeah, that's that's correct. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. But good to know. Um, excellent. So I, what do I need to roll? Strength plus, plus brawl, just straight up? Yeah, plus and you potence. can add potence to that. I'll let you roll first. <laughs> okay, okay. So that's, he might botch uh, and faceplant. That's true. There's some bad rolls last time. That there were. It's a lot of dice. Oh, um, God. I regret to inform you that those tens <laughs> count for two successes. Uh, this is a grappling. Eleven roll. successes? Uh, yeah. yeah. All right, check this out. Check this out. I'm gonna see if I can beat it. Ready? You got. You got this. You got this. Do you I've even have this. like that number of dice? Not even close. No. no. Three. No. <laughs> no. Quadrupled. This no, is guys. just a total Check domination. It out. Look, that's a 16 right there. I'm seeing on my screen. Okay, we'll count that to two. <laughs> that's two <laughs> out of eleven. <laughs> uh. So. <laughs> So I just get thrown away like yesterday's newspaper. Just the question is: like, Does Darby all the, all notice? The way to the prospectors camp. Does Darby <laughs> notice that she even tried to to bother him? Like, what was that random gust of wind next to me? <laughs> Darby runs to the body with such force that he uh, he bounces Excavo back into the lake. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> she gets back out pretty easily, but uh, she's He's... bounced far enough away that she cannot uh, catch up with Darby before he finishes the act, unless if someone else is also interfering with what he's doing. I imagine he's sucking so hard that before he even gets yeah, he his is. teeth in, the blood is just flowing <laughs> up and it's being pulled up into his mouth. <laughs> Talk about Diablo rising. Stay a while. Coincidentally, the amount of blood that Death had left was exactly how much blood you were missing from your ah, blood spectacular. Pool. Death had spent quite a lot of blood to try to get away from you guys and uh, was getting kind of close to running out. So Darby, you now have a full blood pool. That's 15, correct? Uh, yes, it is. Next, your uh, humanity drops to uh, drops to it was six. Pretty high, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was seven. Now it's down to six, which is still like that's fine. It's not a bad humanity rating. Do do do. Uh, please give me a self control roll. Self control roll difficulty four. I would like to expend a temporary will PowerPoint to succeed on this roll. Can I do that? I only have two dice in self control, and I don't want to fuck this up. So yeah, you might kill everybody. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say yeah. I, I'm not seeing anything definitive that says it's okay, but uh, I think I'm comfortable allowing that right now. So you are not at risk of frenzying. Good for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Darby, you were overwhelmed by an orgasmic euphoria. You feel oh. the uh, the soul of the horseman death enter into your body. You feel uh, your blood become more potent. You feel yourself become more powerful. You feel your blood pool increasing. Your ability oh, to shed blood increasing. Uh, Shit, yeah. You now know what it feels like to be of the seventh generation. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. That's my favorite brand of I don't know why, but I imagine Darby's just over there, just starts (laughs) swinging. Just enjoy. Just like punching. Punching trees and stuff. I'm going to real quick repeat my joke just so it has clear audio for when Graham clips it for the best of compilation. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Seventh generation, that's my favorite brand of cleaning products. Uh, 
It's the best joke in the show so far. <laughs> so tell me now, what is my blood points per turn limit and my new blood pool? Tell me everything I need to know about being a seventh generation. Aside from my uh, full-on gargoyle character, I have never played a, high, a better than eighth gen character before. So Was that this, Onyx this, Feldspar? That's right, Onyx Feldspar, the gargoyle. Onyx Feldspar, that's a name. It's a pretty I good name. So. He was a terrifying force. Yeah, didn't you make just an unstoppable gargoyle character that could also fly and just like pick people yeah. up and drop them? No, he. It, it was literally so ridiculously overpowered, and we used just in-game rules because they have made a whole gargoyle thing for Tremere, and at elder levels, it's completely outrageous. Oh, Viseratica, just yeah, totally overpowered. I was playing a LARP like right before the pandemic where I was playing a Tremere character that learned a little bit of Viseratica from a, a gargoyle and I abused oh, the fine. shit out of the power that lets you touch a building. Listen to rocks. Oh my God. It's completely you, you touch a building it. and you immediately oh. know the entire layout of the building and where oh. everybody is in it. So it just takes all the guesswork out of like infiltration. At higher levels, you can just, like, literally meld with the rocks. Teleport into and out of rocks at will. It's completely preposterous. So strong. Uh, that rocks. Yeah. At 7th generation, your maximum trait rating for anything, this is attributes, abilities, disciplines, uh, isn't 5, it's 6. Your blood pool went from 15 to 20, and oh, the number of blood points you can spend per turn is now four instead of three. Mm, insanely strong. My God. Uh, as you feel death's soul enter you, you feel a, a cold, eerie sort of uh, corruption of, of your not soul. Not. You, you feel the world around you get a little colder uh, a little, you have a feeling of being watched, everything around you appears a little more dead, almost like your eyes have truly opened to the forces of death that are all around you. The people like when you the, learn about mushrooms, this is a lot, this has happened to Darby a lot recently. Yeah. Oh, I thought this was the matrix. <laughs> and all of a sudden you feel like you're kind of seeing the world perhaps through death's eyes with an, an understanding of death uh, the world appears to you as a corpse mortals look diseased or skeletal buildings Aww. seem decrepit and your fellow your fellow Damn. kindred seem to be walking moldering cadavers um, oh. 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 good well, stuff oh, and bad stuff God. you are, are gross you're now at a oh, negative God. two difficulty to resist all roles that are based on appearance if someone tries to uh, seduce or mm. cajole you based on like looking good that's not going to work as well on you um, but uh, you are now at a plus two difficulty for perception based roles and oh, no. you find some aspects of social interaction uh, a bit more difficult because of your death sight that you currently have that is a flaw uh, it is a flaw yes okay just adding that to my sheet well, Darby, I believe these belong to you, I say, holding out all of the wet mummy rags that I saved <laughs> from death. I mean, I think Darby does strap on the necklace as kind of a morbid souvenir. So one, one other thing. When you first start to speak after Diablo Rising Death, you notice a strange quality to your tongue it it feels like you have more control over your tongue all of a sudden and you kind of move it around in your in your mouth a little bit and you get the urge to dart it out and you see that uh mm -hmm. your tongue at the moment has the ability to dart out as a sharp spike that can reach uh i think a foot and a half away from you whoa what 
Yeah, it's like he <laughs> death did that to us last week. Death did that to Augustine. But that's only oh, tem- no. that's temporary, right? That, I, it is. I can only do that for a while. It is, is currently it? the case. Enjoy your tongue Uh-oh. stuff while it lasts. Uh, yeah, eighteen inches or half a meter. How how do I discover the full like extent that I can do this? Because I don't know if I saw him do the attack before. I assume that Darby's like, what, what the hell? And like kind of spits uh-huh. his tongue out a foot and a half. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. I wanted to see if everybody uh-huh. else would see that I could do this. Yeah, so so yeah, you see Darby like struggle with it in his mouth and, and he can't really talk because it's just like full of tongue. He's like, oh, this is <laughs> and like the full uh, and it darts right back in and now he can talk and he's like, what the fuck is that about? Anyway, you're welcome, everyone. <clears throat> so what's next? I uh, I dodged a bullet, I guess. <laughs> Two things that are a result of this. One, uh, terrifyingly, this does aggravated damage based on your strength plus potence. The tongue thing does? The tongue thing does, yes. The oh, tongue thing? Wow. <laughs> Oh no! Also, we should go directly into more battle by flicking the tongue uh. in and out of your mouth. Any penalties related to being in darkness are cut in half. You can you get kind of like an echolocation sort of thing from the tongue as well. Wild. What? <laughs> Additionally, you said that you take the uh, the golden. Oh, I didn't get any neat body parts, and I doubt I saw one. Um, it does not yet appear that you have gotten any similar <laughs> effects from the no. rising pestilence. <laughs> this is true. Nothing has come up yet. Oh, that, that you have noticed. Oh no. Oh no. Oh shit. When you put on the golden amulet, a uh, few things happen. First, oh, uh, Augustine takes a look at it and recognizes the symbol on the front of it that looks like some sort of plant uh, is. Uh, representation of a lotus flower. Uh, second, when you put it on, you suddenly start to like hear faint whispers. You start to just see like little wisps of light in the distance, and uh, all of a sudden there it's is trippy man. There's a fifth person there. <gasps> Who the you, fuck are you? Standing next to Augustine. Or sorry, uh Archibald. And do it's, I, oh, it's kind of a I, vague, hazy outline. Do I, re- of, do I recognize this motherfucker? No. God damn it. Hang on. Wait, I'm in, I'm pretty, you recognize him? I wish I'd done it. I wish I ate the diabolization. I wish I ate him. Oh, no. <laughs> and you see uh, Onion Jack isn't looking at you. He's looking at Archibald, and he's he's kind of like waving his hands. And he's saying, oh, Mr. Archibald, why, why, why can't can you not see me? Can you? I'm trying to talk to you. <laughs> he looks crestfallen. And then he looks mm. over at you, and he sees that you are making eye contact with him. Yep. And he's yep. taken back, and he says, Hello? Can you see me? <laughs> so what I would like to do is make just, for the sake of argument, a humanity check. And so I'm going to roll six, six dice. A humanity check? Mm-hmm. No. Don't know where you're going with Don't this. Do Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it to my boy. Um, I see three successes. What okay. was that for? And so Darby's just like, yeah, I can see you. What What can I do for you, Onion Jack? Uh, well, hello? What's, the, uh... What? what? Yeah, Darby, right. what do you do? You, you the s- spirit of Onion Jack is right here with you, sir. Darby's just like, he can't believe he has to be a medium for you fuckers after all this oh shit. Oh my gosh, Onion Jack. <laughs> Tell him I said hello. Tell him I said I love him. 
He can oh. hear you, man. He's just like right next to you. Uh. Onion Jack you is very, very distracted by, uh, by Darby, and he's saying, "Well, you sound like Darby, but who? You don't look like Darby. Who? Who? Who are you, sir?" All oh, right, no, <laughs> I, I am Darby, but like, uh, oh man, this is so complicated. Uh, I was born you, again. You ain't, you as, ain't Darby. Uh, no, <laughs> I've seen Darby. Oh shit. Well, trust me, son. I'm I'm fucking Darby. Why would it, why would anyone else try to be Darby for fun? I'm fucking I'm Darby. Jesus Christ, this sucks. Do you want me to talk to your best friend for you? I can somehow speak to the dead. This seems like a unique opportunity for you if you want to take advantage of it. But instead, you're just like fighting with me. As if I would somehow, for some reason, pretend to be fucking Darby. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I'm I real, believe him. At this I'm point, real sorry, I believe him. <laughs> Mr. Darby, whatever you say, you, you're Darby. And uh, yeah, tell Mr. Archibald that um, I miss him and I'm sorry if I gave him a fright. And I'm sorry I got, I got pulled down through that. Uh, okay, th- all right. So yeah, Darby relates all of this stuff. Darby. You have death's powers now. Can you can you put Onion Jack back in his body? Can you put Onion Jack in my body? The oh, one with the shit. cross over I, his face is the one who has to bring so. it back. <laughs> but Darby get Darby gives it the college try. He's like, "All right, try to get in, try to get in him." <laughs> and it's just like, like like pointing the ghost at Archibald <laughs> and then when they get together, Darby tries, you know, what I don't know, like squeezes his butt, just like, mm, just really tries to put his soul, put Onion Jack's soul into, uh, I, I don't know what that feels like to do, but Darby's trying to do it. You find your hand just passing right through Onion Jack, just completely incorporeal. You, you It doesn't seem like you can manipulate Onion Jack, well, can, can, he, can he is can he move himself? Uh, Onion Jack awkwardly like walks up to Archibald, and he seems really hesitant. He's like, "Okay, so I I just uh, go what in into it, I'm possessing? you're the ghost man. Shit, I don't know. <laughs> for me, I'm, I'm, I've well, seen I- ghosts." For like six seconds. What the fuck do you want me to tell you about it? Well, how long have you been dead? I've never walked into somebody's body. It's just, I don't want to. Well, give it, it a go. You're going to be dead for a long fucking time. So you might as well find out now what happens. He gets Shit. like this close to Archibald's face. And it's like, I got, a, I got a weird block about this. I don't, I, I want to. And he like slowly like, like puts his hand, like his fingertips into Archibald's chest and after a few seconds he's like oh and he just like passes his arms through Archibald and and Archibald doesn't notice anything at all of course does not feel anything does he feel anything and Onion Jack shrugs and just takes a big step and like positions his feet right where (laughs) Archibald's shoes are and then tries to like fit into Archibald's arms Perfect. and then sort of like every now and then like dips his, his face out to like look around and you see his face emerging from Archibald's face. And we are exactly the same height. Canonical. And <laughs> Onion Jack notices that like this is having no effect, but he seems uh, increasingly amused by it. And at one point he, he pulls his arms in and he's like, hey, Mr. Darby, check this out. And he gives Archibald like little <laughs> antennae, like with his fingers, like "Ooh, I'm Archibald, I'm an alien." Yeah, I don't think this is doing anything. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I was really happy that I was able to help y'all have this moment. So it doesn't seem like we're gonna be able to do anything else. I don't have, uh, I don't have power over life and death. <laughs> and it turns out, I can see this fucking guy is the one thing. <laughs> So if you want to take advantage of my ability to see this motherfucker, then I, then you can do that. Otherwise, I'm not taking requests. You know, the, the, the helpline's closed. Uh, <laughs> oh, um, um, Mr. Darby, could, uh, 
could you maybe tell my brother uh, what what happened with me? Because I don't think anyone else really. Well, unless if those nice uh, uh, me medic fellows, the 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 doctor, the ambulance types that that got those my body. Those guys are not nice. Those are your your best friend shot one of those guys right in the face. <laughs> oh. Oh, are you guys talking about the medics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's bringing them up. He's oh, saying I got to I got to go find them and talk to them. Oh, awful guys. Well, in, unless I'm stating otherwise, Darby is generally repeating what he's hearing so everyone can hear. Yeah, I I, I just want my brother to to know why I'm going to miss our our uh, Friday soup night uh, over over there in his camp. I don't want him to get worried about me. That sounds like an important message your your best friend in life can deliver now now that I can translate. Now that he has heard this as well, he can take that on as his quest. Honestly, you, you could probably life. just you could probably text him too. You just it's on the his. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, he could also probably do that as well. Yeah. So we'll, I'm not we'll gonna get that translated. The, the, the prospector camp is like in, it's right there. If we could just, it's not even out of the way. We'll just go tell him. I set off on my holy mission. Your holy mission. To tell the brother whose name I forget now. It's been a while since we've it's, seen Onion Jack. It's Onion brother. Jim. I don't know. <laughs> is it Onion something? I don't. I have no it idea. Is. No, it is not. The foreman is Jasper Jack. Jasper Boggs. Jasper. And Onion Jack is Jack Boggs. Okay, I set off in search of a Jasper. A few and Darby away. looks at Onion Jack. He's like, "So you're gonna go there, and I'll I'll just hang here probably, and." Uh, so that that'll be all right. I think he's gonna go deliver your message for you. Well, that that'd be wonderful, Mister Darby. And I um maybe then I'll uh like see a light and, and go into it. I don't. Yeah, I'm um, not sure, but you could probably look around elsewhere and see if maybe there's a staircase or something like farther away from me, where you could maybe I don't know look for it. Uh, like I've heard. Heard there's like an escalator or like a highway, maybe, depending on what song or God you believe in. <laughs> um, but I think you should start looking for the way and uh, just know that your brother and your friend have the closure that they deserve. And now you can go peacefully on away from me. Where <laughs> Episode so uh, the group walks uh, a short distance, uh, a little bit of a hike to the prospector camp where, uh, what time is it? It is about um, one, uh, a little after one, th one in the morning. And uh, the campfires are all very much died down, just little bits of embers. And uh, you remember where you last encountered Jasper Boggs, the foreman of the mining camp and Onion Jack's brother. Uh, you remember he has a big tent right by the main fire and uh, you don't see anyone up or awake. But you do hear Jasper snoring in a very idiosyncratic Jasper snorey way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm like already <laughs> weeping and not holding it together. So I, I shake him away, uh, awake while I'm already inconsolably crying and just yelling, he's gone, Jasper, he's gone. Oh, uh, you're the fella that I, I met the other night. I'm, I'm sorry. I do not. I do not remember your name, Fred. What? Uh, what? How? How can I help you at this ungodly hour? Jasper, I don't, I don't know what to do without it. <sighs> oh, come on, man! Keep it together. Now, now, <sighs> now, slow down, sir. What, uh, what seems to be the matter? I'm sure it's not that bad. It's just. <laughs> Can you describe what this old man looks like to my death site right now? 
Um, well, before he looked like uh, a grizzled 19th century gold prospector, big beard, sleeping in overalls. He's got a hat with a big uh, like shotgun like hole going through it. And now uh, he looks like that, but you are very aware of like how thin his skin is, how close his skull is to the surface, how like sinewy and like dirty and like how his teeth seem to like just barely be hanging in. He, to you, he looks much more like, like a corpse. And I definitely am treating him like that when I say, just like, oh, God, ugh. <laughs> damn. <laughs> Shit. And Darby only has one dot of appearance, so he's not like a good looking guy and still is just like, Oh God! Oh, I That's think we did respect. not establish that Thurgood had more dots of appearance. Well, he he couldn't. I mean, he, he had been in a cage for however long. <laughs> He's not at his best self. He was based He's on a, David Attenborough, who is a fox, but yeah. Uh, this you know he was just a, a copy though, a knockoff. So just a pudgy old white guy. Yeah. Um. Uh, well, friend, what if uh, if there's something you need to get off your chest and it's it's hard to speak, uh, perhaps you could write down what's troubling you. <laughs> Still sobbing, I <laughs> take my finger and just scratch into the sand. <laughs> I scratch into the sand Fuck. and I write, Dear Jasper, I regret to inform you that your brother has <laughs> passed away. Stop. How long does this take? <laughs> oh my god, he's sitting there. Sincerely, cursive. Prince Archibald Albans. <laughs> and it's in cursive, too. Jasper's taken aback by this, and he looks at you and he says, My god, what happened? I'm still crying, and therefore I say, Your brother was uh, doing some freelance work for a local real estate corporation, and while he was investigating one of the homes, he had an unfortunate heart attack and passed away. <laughs> Writing all this in cursive. <laughs> Writing in cursive with my finger, yes, in the in the sand. Yeah. In summation. That's like that's like close enough to true, but like how is how is Onion Jack reacting to hearing the story being told? Reading yeah, the story want, like, being told. Re- yes. Re- reading what's being written about his death. Uh, Uncle Jack has actually uh, like not followed you. He he wandered off somewhere else in the camp. He's, he's not present and, and listening to this. Looking for the stairway. Uh-huh. Awesome. Darby got him. <laughs> oh, man. Jasper says, oh, my God. Did Were you his friend? Were you close to him? I'll say. He was my best friend. Oh, Jesus. Jasper says, Well, he was mine too. And I'm really sorry that I I never got a chance to tell him that, that it was my fault that he lost all his money and was destitute and had to live in Onion Alley. See, oh, he, he, he invested in my former company, which... Uh, I, I purposefully tanked because I, I I bet on the company failing and my brother didn't know what I was going to do. He, he thought I was going to lead it to success. So he invested all of his money in my company. And then when I purposefully drove it into the ground, I got rich. And well, Jack didn't. Jack lost everything. And I, I could never bring myself to tell him that that I, I did it on purpose to get rich. Well, so let, let me see if I if I understand wait, your story. Wait. You you a corporate robber baron were so greedy that uh you you impoverished your own brother? Is that well, is I, that right? I didn't know that he was going to do that. He didn't tell me that he he invested all that in my company. If I had known, I, I would have warned him against it. But I I I think it was like a like a secret that he was going to surprise me or, or something because he put all of his money into my company and that's that's just what he would do he's, he's a sweet guy and uh well i'm sure someday he and i will be reunited and i'll 
I'll get a chance to apologize to him. Maybe sooner than you think. You know, you were uh, you were someone that it just like bankrupted uh, a bunch of people, closed down your company on purpose. Oh yeah, like a scam. Oh, yeah. And you got your own brother caught up in that. Sounds like something the working man wouldn't benefit much from. Looking meaningfully at the prince. Huh? He he sucks. gestures he gestures at the whole camp and all of the all of the tents. Well, for what it's worth, I, I do bankroll this whole operation and even though we haven't found much gold lately, I I, I pay all of these men a, a pretty decent wage for their time, so I don't know if that factors into your calculus of if, if I'm a good person or not, but that's my current situation. I just walk away past him. Well, and then I... And then I say something like, you're already dead. And I did the anime thing where I cut him so fast, he never even knew what was coming. <laughs> you so you just you just killed this guy. Is that, is that is is that what you mean? Yeah. I guess. That <laughs> seems like what uh-huh. you were asking uh-huh. me to do. Like does Archibald Nobody asks for anything. <laughs> does Archibald kill this guy? I kind of want to find out more about what, this guy's story. I kind of don't want to do that, but I already said it, so I mean, no, it's no. it's up to you. In fact, uh Jasper's in the middle of saying, "Well, friend, um I I would like to stay in touch with you. So so you have Someone who was close to Onion Jack that you could talk to if you need to. And also, I'm sure we'll have some sort of funeral or memorial for him. And I want to make sure that you you know about it and you get an invitation. So do you mind if we exchange digits? Yeah, I'm just I'll, imagining get his, him. I'll get his cell phone number. I, I won't samurai slash him. I'm just imagining him being dead this whole time. Like, just giving you this whole nice dialogue about the funeral. And you've already killed him. Like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, shit. And he looks out like, is that... Is that my head? Why is my head down there? <laughs> that, that would be very funny, actually. <laughs> His, like, head falls falls off. <laughs> that would... that I like Why that you over even there? better. <laughs> oh shit! And he drops down into hell, and there's like a gout of flame. <laughs> I think we should do that. Actually, that's good. Well, at the moment, he has asked if uh, you would consent to exchanging cell phone numbers. I offer my consent. He pulls out a flip phone, and you exchange numbers. Ah, uh, a Motorola man. Is is uh, Onion Jack's body? Uh, w- would it be in the in the hospital or? Where I assume this this just happened. Um, uh, tell me where where is where is my brother right now? Um, the body is gone. It was a it was a bad heart attack. <laughs> the heart <laughs> ate the whole thing. <laughs> what, what do you mean the body's gone? <laughs> um, the heart attacked so hard. You know, <laughs> uh, that is the dumbest one. <laughs> uh, yes, do tell. Uh, what happened to the body? What was the real estate company called again? Jolly Pirates Real Estate? American Realty Resource. <laughs> yeah, our. Arr. Arr. I regret to inform you that Onion Jack Boggs has be- become the posthumous property of R. You're going to tell this man that his brother was given to a real estate agency. Okay, it's so customary it's for a, employees it's a of R to, to, to be buried <laughs> in a secret location. What can I say? It's a buyer's market. 
Okay, so uh, I, sh- I should contact the, that real estate company to no, uh, collect no, the that's body? No, that's not allowed. Can we go back to the heart attack part? <laughs> it, it just came out that just started. <laughs> Listen, you do all the other funeral stuff, and... Um, <laughs> Oh, when I contact you, body. when I contact you about the funeral, would you bring the body? <laughs> That's how funerals work. Yes, yes. Someone brings casserole, you bring body. <laughs> I am familiar with this custom. To be honest, I, I've never planned a funeral before. I've I've never had to do that. Uh, yes, that's how it works. The best friend brings the body. It's like the best man in a wedding. <laughs> and how they bring, how they bring the body to the wedding. Darvis is like, <laughs> does everyone bring their own? Or <laughs> in my it's home like country, a, yes, it's like a BYOB. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, I have to get the date somehow, I guess. Okay, well, um, I suppose I'll be in touch. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm gonna get some. I'm gonna get some sleep now. Sounds good. Thanks for telling me about this and uh, being so nice to me and my body. Yes, I did. I. It is a very nice decision that I made to not kill you. Yes, I. I, I think this has worked out as best as it could have. Yeah, you definitely need to get more sleep. Other than dead brother, you look fucking haggard, my guy. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah check being there, but he seemed to believe it. <laughs> he falls backward and immediately, like, <laughs> and there's a there's a single feather that's he's like blowing and it's floating back down to his mouth. And he, of course, <laughs> two big bare feet sticking out from the tent. Oh, you meant like like a snot bubble, just like big. Well, everybody, I need a drink. I think I want to keep fighting. Let's go. I'm a, I'm in the mix. I'm feeling good. I got this big punk thing. It's fucking awesome. Like, let's go. I would kind of like to go to the bar that we own for the first time in this campaign. Ah, shit. Fine. Hey, <laughs> do you know where people love to fight, Darby? Uh, the bar. At the bar. Good, Excavo. I didn't really ask you, but thank you for contributing. Because <laughs> I knew the answer first. It's kind of, a, <laughs> kind of a spe- kind of a special quiz for Darby there, but <laughs> I made it just for him, my best friend. But and Darby's like pouting, pouting and glaring at her, like, <laughs> "No, no, I am the best friend." <laughs> um, Darby's like, "Yeah, I think I bet I could win some bar bets with this thing. Check it out!" And he's just like launching his oh. tongue, tongue thing. Oh. Man, All right, Darby. I've is there any cost to deploying it, or can I just like launch the tongue? It's launch it's just the a, tongue. It's just a thing you got. It's like swinging a fist. Just he's. I'm definitely doing it like a lot, like too much, like an annoying amount. If it makes a noise, people are tired of hearing the noise. Oh, I forgot. There's another part of it. Uh, it is Uh-oh. hollow, and you could drink blood through it. You don't need to. Oh, oh my god! You can skip over the thing. Oh. I'm like oh, a no. fucking mosquito with it. Wow! How does Darby? Now that is a silly this? straw. How does Darby discover that his uh, his thing is a straw? Uh, I suppose if he reaches his hand into his mouth to sort of, he would notice that there's like suction there, on there's it. There's a, like a hole. Oh, <laughs> the possibilities are endless. <laughs> how, uh, how large is the? Oh, is it like is it a pin, or is it like? It's it's not it's not a two finger <laughs> kind of situation. Oh, okay, it's, it's just it's like just enough. One... So yeah, I think um, before the next campaign, would you draw us a detailed diagram of this tongue? <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, you could pay someone five dollars to do it. Fiverr. On Fiverr, yeah. <laughs> we should get people from Fiverr to illustrate all of these scenes. Can you? <laughs> the graphic novel is the graphic novelization. Can- <laughs> Oh my god, Andy. Can you self diabolize? Are you kidding me? Just like hmm. jabs the inside of his cheek and just like circle drinks his own blood. Auto diablerization 
Uh, auto auto erotic <laughs> diablerization. This does seem like the it, kind of it's campaign not sharp, word. is it? The tongue. Is it sharp? It's razor yeah. sharp. Yeah. Oh my Pretty god! Cool, it can do. Darby can do upwards of. Hang on a second. Five, six, seven aggravated damage with it. So he could just kill someone. Just yeah. drop dead. Which is enough to one shot someone. We should keep fighting things, is what I'm saying. While however long I can do this, I'm just imagining you making out with somebody go. at the bar at Club Wonderland and going full alien and shooting it out the back of their neck. Uh. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Uh, if you got this thing, that would happen. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> you would have tomato juice all the time. Yeah, I'm slurping tomato juice with your tongue straw. <laughs> I feel like I may have made a tremendous mistake. So you guys head to Club Wonderland? We should all get one. Yeah. That's that's where we're going. Yeah. Well, I don't remember our car situation. It's been so long. I don't so know. this is how it works. Um, you guys backtrack to... Uh, uh, to the haunted house you pass by the yes. lake you see that death's body has uh totally disintegrated and is ash that has blown away uh, all that's left is uh the the hooded cloak that he was wearing and i think maybe uh his mask that maybe like floats up on the edge of the lake yeah darby goes and grabs them both First, he was walking by like, bye, bitch. And then he sees the stuff and he's like, oh, oh yeah, more <laughs> trophies. Yeah, definitely. Just goes and gets it, puts it all on. Like, got you, got your shit. Get fucking wrecked. Darby's just going to assemble a whole outfit of war trophies from different people. That's what I'm hoping. It's off to a great start. So from the lake, uh, you walk in the direction of the nearby neighborhood. You find the haunted house. Uh, you have a couple cars parked outside of it, and you take those to Club Wonderland. It is, at that point, uh, about 1.30 in the morning. You hear music bumping inside. There is uh, a little bit of a crowd outside. And there's a security guard that is uh, like greeting people, checking IDs, wanding people down. And he's about to do that with uh, you guys. And then he stops and goes, oh, oh, yeah, you guys are the new owners. Uh, yeah, sorry, be my guest. Sorry, I've, I haven't met you guys yet. Uh, but um, I guess someone showed me your pictures from, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> security footage I don't, yeah, uh, someone... go, don't think too much about it uh, go go right ahead zoom in <laughs> enhance and you walk into club wonderland and you see that there is uh, a substantial crowd there's a concert that seems to be running late and there's a band on stage that appears to be the headliner that just finished setting up and sound checking and uh, is just now introducing uh, themselves. It's a four piece and a guy walks up to the microphone and says, Hey everybody, I am Dr. Rock and we oh are Dr. Rock and the geology department on oh lead guitar is professor Igneous on drums is instructor metamorphic and on bass guitar is Gary, the sedimentary GA by day. We teach at the new Kamak university department of geology. But <laughs> by night, we rock out with songs about the materials that our planet is made of and the natural processes that they undergo. This first song is about a hot little mama <laughs> who turns magma into lava. It's called uh, the volcano. Uh, One, two, three, four. And then goes into a song oh explaining. Darby is actively booing. As soon as he realizes it's like science rock, he's like, you guys fucking suck. This sucks. Are you kidding? And he's like looking around for help. Like, as if trying to rally the crowd. It's a, a, the science. Away. It's really good that this isn't a biology theme band or Thurgood would have been re released. Hold from the depths. You see the crowd very much divided between the. Uh, the young, cool, hip, fashionable people who were like mostly at this like island bar in the middle and uh, kind of not paying attention to the music. And they're like trying to talk over it to like have conversations to socialize. And up against the stage is a crowd of people not dressed up at all who all look like 
college students, graduate students, a few teachers uh, have the vibe of people who like don't usually go out to things like this, but came out to support Dr. Rock and the geology department. So Darby, choosing really wisely his allies, goes up to the younger people because he thinks they're going to agree. And he's like, this shit sucks, right? This isn't what you guys like to listen to. Let's get some let's get some real rock music in here. Uh, the person you're talking to says, I'm I'm pretty sure they already booked tonight, dude. I don't think they can change the band, but you could you could go somewhere else if you don't like this place. Yeah, I own this place, motherfucker. What are you trying to <laughs> what are you trying to say to me? Oh, you're the owner? Yeah. I, I didn't have anything to do with booking this, this sh- shitty band and your friends and all of that but yeah this is my this is my bar well go take care of it i mean you, you can kick them off the stage i guess now how do you feel about that honestly don't give a shit <laughs> well i was only gonna do it to make you mad so oh. shit i mean you'd make other people mad well, that 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 is enticing, but uh, I'm conf- I'm confused now. <laughs> Darby just like wanders. He's like wanders away. You you overhear the guy being like, "I don't think that guy was the owner." <laughs> I'm sure that's the impression that Darby left. Right after he leaves, I saunter up in my sewer suit. Yeah, we are not clean. Yeah, aren't we like gross? We do not smell <laughs> yes. good. Um, uh, no, and... no, no, you weren't in the sewer. You were in a uh, storm drain. So there, you weren't ah. exposed to sewage, just like rainwater. Oh good. oh, good. So we smell pure. Like rain. Like rain. Like the autumn rain. The spring rain. Petricor, or however you pronounce it. Petricor, or Petricor. Is the manager that I would recognize behind the bar? Uh, yeah, Marsha. Oh, I was going to say Marsha, and I was like, there's no way I remember it from like two years ago. Marsha Dalton. Okay. Yes. Uh, you recognize uh, a few people. Um, uh, the named ones are uh, Marsha Dalton. And also uh, the guy that was momentarily confused for Randy um, an older gentleman in a really smooth purple suit named Felix Donovan is also at the bar. Um, and Marsha spots you and uh, looks very busy, just running all around, but like sees you and walks right up to you. He goes, hey, uh, cool. I was wondering when you guys were going to like uh, show up. Um, uh, how, ha- how's it going? Is there, are we going to like have a, a meeting about uh, anything? Do you have like plans for the place? I got I got it under control, but like we haven't had any dialogue about this place yet. Absolutely, I was thinking the same thing. Busy right now, obviously. Let's meet tomorrow. We've been very busy getting adjusted to the new digs, getting the lay of the land. Um, first person I want to talk to, other than you, Marcia, who does the booking here? Um, I, uh, I usually do the booking myself. Right. Okay. We'll talk about that. <laughs> okay. Honestly, if, if you could, if we could delegate that to someone else, that, that would be great for me because I got my hands full, uh, keeping the bar stocked and keeping the staff showing up and on time. Uh, it's, it's a pain in the ass trying to stay on top of like, you know, who people want booked in here. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. You know, have. Yeah. You have plenty of responsibilities. We'll we'll get someone with taste on that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> the shade. It's already night. <laughs> our, our, like, we don't, we don't do need more shade. We don't do rock in my establishment. <laughs> okay, she's. We're going to be a jazz and classical bar now. She's what? in the middle of like making a kind of complicated mixed drink for someone, and she. She freezes when she hears that. And she says, okay, yeah, we, we could talk about that. There's there's a staff meeting at uh, at noon every day. Uh, you're welcome to join us for that. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, are we going to see you there tomorrow? Uh, doesn't work with my schedule. How about, 
uh, midnight? Honestly, uh, you can show up whenever and I'm probably going to be here because I have to be. So, uh, yeah, just whenever works for you. You just uh, take it easy and whatever you you want your <laughs> schedule to be, you just, you just have that. And I will be here uh, forever uh, until I die. Great. Thanks, Marsh. I'm sorry. That was, I don't need to lash out at you. It's just, um, I, I will be available to you is, is the point that I'm, I'm trying to make. I appreciate it very much. Remember, seize the means of production and that I leave. <laughs> She's already making someone else's drink and seems to not be giving that much thought. So a couple of painful realizations for Darby. I think this is, um, Definitely the loudest place that he's been since he got heightened senses. So I think that's probably a drag. <laughs> um, and he should have deduced by now that um, that death site is a thing. But instead, it's just in total denial. <laughs> like, it just keeps making up excuses for why everyone looks so shitty. <laughs> like, we really got to up our clientele in here. A bunch of <laughs> filthy hippies. Look at these people. They they look and smell terrible. We we have got to do a lot better getting getting people in the door. I mean, this is this is a motley crew. Now they look like they have meth, <laughs> which I I do appreciate that. Thank thank them for bringing that meth in the door. But yikes. <laughs> I mean, they need to get some vitamin D or I, I, I don't know. I don't know. This is this is tough. And all of them, every single person in here looks like shit. Not one dime piece. Thank them for bringing the meth. Well, as you're looking around, you huh. recognize one more person. Uh, you see Teddy Linkletter uh, also at the bar, kind of a, a distance from you. It doesn't look like he's noticed uh, you guys, but... Uh, you see a few empty glasses in front of him. He's not with anyone else. And uh, it looks like he's had a stressful night and he's been coping with it uh, with a, a bunch of mixed drinks. Uh, at this same time, uh, Archibald, you suddenly get a text message, which is the only way to get a text message. They don't <clears throat> happen gradually. Um, the text message is from Mr. Bilson. A.K.A. Barry the Bruja, A.K.A. just Barry Bruja. Barry Bruja, yeah. Mm -hmm. And guy. the message says, Hey boss, uh, any update about the monster, what got my arm? Uh, also, Feather's been asking me if we figured out where her master river went. Uh, you need me to work on any of that, just say the word and I'm, I'm on it. Uh, been thinking of going to River's place again and seeing if he came home. First off... Let's not go with the word boss. I don't really like it. <laughs> Second, we did kill the monster. Uh, sorry for not letting you know. It was like a while back. Yesterday. He, he texts back immediately like, hey, hey, it's okay. Uh, you're, you're getting shit done. That's good. Uh, was it Yesterday. <laughs> Did we kill him two days in a yeah, row? Yeah, I, 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 th I think it was like last night or the night before oh that gosh. we killed the pestilence. Thurgood had one whole day to be like a vampire full <laughs> in control of his body. Yep. <laughs> Great. Um, I text him, one of us will go with you tomorrow night to check on the river situation. Got it. Just let me know. Sick. And then in parentheses, I said something I heard a teen here say. Well, wait, something I heard a college kid here say. We don't have teens at our bar that we have. Could, could like, have oh, been God. a teen. Some people look pretty young. Folks could have slipped in. A uh, quick update about uh, the state of everybody. Augustine, you are hungry. You only have five of 15 blood points. Also, you have uh, three levels of damage. You are injured. Uh, Archibald is also a little low. You have seven of 13 blood points, but no one else has any injuries. Uh, you would have an opportunity to hunt while you were in Club Wonderland, and there are some like dark little corners here and there. Uh, I'm just imagining in my hungered and injured state and, in, and having, you know, swam through some uh, stormy, probably not the most well-filtered water, I look 
impeccable. I saunter on up to Linkletter and... My good man, you look about as good as I feel. Could you use some oh, company? Uh, uh, Augustine, uh, it's it's good to, to see you. I was very concerned about that fight that I, I saw in the, in the basement and the gunshots that went up through the, the floorboards. Um, Tell me, honestly, is... Is everything okay? I know that there's something that you're keeping from me, but I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not in any position to pry. I mean, you are my best friend and I do, uh, I'm, I'm concerned about you, but just know that I, I feel out of the loop and, and a bit worried. Uh, uh, some minor tussles, some squabbles among town, uh, the general ruffian hoodlumism. Uh, would you, would you care for some company? I'm afraid that clears nothing up, but yes, uh, absolutely. I, 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 I produced the bear cub and set it on the stool next to him and feign walk, walking away. And then I appear on his other side. My good man, oh! you couldn't possibly leave the, a minor at the bar. Checks over shoulders for Onion Jack's brother. Minor joke. Anyway. Um, uh, we all get it. We all hate it. <laughs> He's really more of a prospector, though. <laughs> the miners come in afterward. One of the big issues in this society, and guys, we're going to pause the game for a moment so I can get on my soapbox. One of yeah, the big issues in the world <laughs> that I advocate for um, is prospector visibility. Uh, people are getting them mixed up with miners all the time, and Andy would like to wholeheartedly apologize for the joke he just made. Uh, in his vast ignorance, he didn't realize uh, it contributes how offensive to the, his words were. It contributes <laughs> to the erasure. Of the erasure and and brutalization of prospectors. You know, I, I, I wholeheartedly support the increased visibility of prospectors. That's why I took Onion Jack's brother's tent on our way to depart. Well, they um, need increased visibility. They have increased visibilities because of the miners have the light on their head, and that increases visibility. But so Teddy says they just have the, to, the pan. T- Teddy says to to Augustine, "Well, um, well I'm glad I wasn't we... really done yet, Graham. No. Um, so, <laughs> please, well, please continue. I do not want to cut you off." Now go back. I'm good. You're good. I'm done. Despite all of this rambling, it, yeah, it it was a major mistake. Honestly, prospectors these days don't have many prospects at all, and I find that ironic and troubling. Mm. Hmm. Augustine, um, I'm, I'm glad we have a, a a second to 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 talk here. Um. I uh, sorry, I've, I've, I'm a few drinks deep right now, but um, I, I want to ask you something. Um, you mm-hmm. you seem like a like a real ladies' man, just a popular lady killer. Probably have a have a body count higher than Rambo. One could say that. You have no idea. Is Darby within earshot of this? Am I hearing this? I have no reason to think that you guys aren't like. Right next to Augusta. Yeah, I don't. I you know, I'm just kind of hanging out. I think Teddy hanging hears out. like open scoffing in response <laughs> to that. <Just> like, <laughs> Teddy seems like a little delirious, and he looks around and can't really tell like where the sound Great. came from. But he he continues, um, like I, that's that's one of that that's one of the reasons why I wanted to hang out with you. I was hoping some of your coolness would rub off on me. And I feel, I feel a little silly asking about this, but like, I, I've got a girlfriend for like the first time ever, like a girl that really seems to to like me and she's special. And I want to make sure that I keep her. Um, So like I'm giving her like flowers every day. She says that she likes, you know, flowers. So I, I, you know, I'm doing that. And I, but I don't want it to seem like I'm like I'm buying her affection, like that kind, like it's a transactional thing. And I just want to make sure that that she uh, uh, that that she knows that she's 
uh, special to me and like how how do you do it how do you hang on to the ladies and not have them like dump you and like point at you and laugh and say i would never and not in a million years and you smell <laughs> and oh, it's and- easy <laughs> law and order and darby summons to kumail nanjiani is just for illustrative purposes it's one of simple. one of the many powers that he gained from diablerizing death all hail kumail all hail kumail <laughs> um my good man, uh, material goods are only skin deep. Uh, you need to indulge your hobbies and demonstrate the value of your interests in blood. Uh, also, if I were to vampirize him, how long would it take me to teach him how to ghoul his girlfriend? Oh, Whoa. boy. Um, okay, so... More like a oh, ghoul, no. ghoul friend. I, mean, I just love that... That the the guy is not asking the lady how to stay with the lady. <laughs> it's it's honestly easy. Asking all the men. Darby's on my lap again. Well, once someone is a vampire, <laughs> it takes basically no time to God damn it, to to explain that if you feed a mortal your blood, they will gradually become enthralled to you, and they will also gain some physical powers and prolonged life. And like, it's just a conversation. So you want him to trap her, is that right? Look, I'm a man of science. He's a, he's presenting a problem. I'm just offering a solution. <laughs> Have you tried shoving plants into her mouth? <laughs> the vines really hold her in place. <laughs> you tried ripping her guts out with your knives? <laughs> you start with shoving plants the in vine? the mouth. Yes, That's first mouth. base for Augustine. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, where do you go from there? A second base. <laughs> Anywhere else. <laughs> well, I'm going to say he got to uh, second base with death in the previous scene. I'd say it's pretty pretty damn close to a home run. Uh, second base is cons- a conservative description. And what would you... What, what, would, what about this here? What base are we? Oh, no. <laughs> You are no. debasing yourself, sir. <laughs> this is a G-rated program. I really like the squeak I get out of the chair. I don't know if that's coming. <laughs> it is really squeaky. funny. <laughs> it's really funny here in person. Just the straight face on Graham's face, though. Just very stern. <laughs> Dude, it's the way it's the way that he likes it. That's how he always <laughs> looks in those kinds of situations. That does like, that is me. pretty close to the death glare that I always have in bed. Uh, <laughs> so, Augustine, what do you uh, what what do you propose I do to to be a a good partner to 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 Madeline? <laughs> Madeline. Madeline. Can I pause and just ask a question? Wasn't the last time these two saw each other, Augustine like kissed him on the mouth? I did. <laughs> yes. Probably. Okay. Yeah. Checks out. Okay. Just what? just wanted to be like the very last thing that happened before they're now running into each other is that they kissed each other on the mouth, and now <laughs> he's asking for relationship advice from obvious <laughs> ladies' man. Kiss no. him on the mouth, Augustine. No, 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 no. Check the tomato. It was just a bro smooch. It's Thank fine. you for reminding me of that. And as <laughs> as Teddy is saying all this, like I, I just I, I wanna I wanna learn from your wisdom. He just like casually just drops a hand on top of your hand on the bar and just <laughs> and kind of like taps it a few times, like just I I mean, no pressure on you to 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 save my relationship, but uh yeah, what's your and he rubs it a little bit, what perspective on, you know, the ladies. Oh my god, what is happening? And then uh, I picks up his <laughs> drink again, and there's no longer physical contact. But just that moment of maybe he's drunk. Who knows? That awkward Toby <laughs> tap from the office. That that moment when uh, a desperate distraction comes back to haunt you. Um, I go on disparagingly about the emphasis of material goods and encourage him to indulge his hobbies and passions, whatever they may be, uh, inquiring loosely about her interest in animals and uh, whatever shenaniganry I saw him messing with before. Uh, 
something something demonstrating value you have to enthrall them and trying to uh I'm trying to slip in a few buzzwords that would otherwise, like, when I eventually try and vamp him, um, like, laying laying uh, a trail of breadcrumbs so that, like, when we get to that point, he can connect the dots and be like, oh! Well, uh, Augustine, uh, I I don't know how, how well that's going to work because I, I've tried to bring up my hobbies to where I've brought up uh, roguelike games. I, I brought up uh, 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 MySQL uh, programming and database administration. Uh, I've, I've brought up Pogs, um, and she <laughs> doesn't seem very interested in uh, exploring my life. I, I got to admit, I don't know if this makes me whipped or, or whatever, but I, I don't, I don't really care about that. She's kind of taking the lead, and she's. Telling me what to do, when to meet her, when to have dates, what kind of flowers to get her. She's kind of the one in charge. And I uh, honestly, I, I kind of don't mind it because if, if she tells me what to do, then I, I know that I'm if I do those things, I'm not screwing it up. But I, I just I kind of want to make sure that she keeps telling me what to do and, and keeps wanting to, to keep me around. I don't know. Slip or your slammer. Slip or your slammer, cuck. When uh when he tapped <laughs> oh my, my hand <laughs> she she has to get her own slammer. <laughs> when he when he tapped my hand will be valuable someday. Sorry. Did uh God, what? Did I feel like a normal blood body temperature on him? Are ghouls colder? Uh ghouls are not colder. Okay. But, never mind. Uh uh yeah, ghouls uh don't have a different like body temperature at all uh but you ghouls are slightly colder than humans ghouls are no cools oh my god get out of here um i i sus- I, I have some lingering suspicions Turning about what he's telling me so i i pry <laughs> a little further and ask for like well how did you meet her why, if she, if like if she's not interested in your hobbies, why? How'd she get there? Uh, and actually, like in the most sociopathic but seemingly tender and earnest way, just start like, m- but <laughs> <laughs> with the appearance of being genuinely interested, um, socio empathetic. So yeah. actually sociopathic, mm-hmm. but the charismatic part of it, got it. Yeah. Okay. So I. I yeah. I inquire. I ask, like, what what she like? How would the meet? Uh, it, it, does she go by Lady What's Her Fuck? Um, no. She uh, she goes by uh, by Madeline or Maddie. I I like formal names. Uh, we we go to the same park. I was I was walking my my ferret. Uh, uh and uh, yeah, she saw me. We were we we're talking about the ferret, and we we got to talking and. Uh, then it, it turned into like, hey, let's let's meet up to have a you know a park date again sometime, and uh, and yeah, that's that's been pretty much it. And she's, she's I've I've learned more about her, and she's learned more about me, and yeah, we've been fairly close uh, since then. Ah, uh, Teddy, how romantic! Tell me, what time of day do you usually like to go on your park walks? Oh well, um, I I work uh, pretty late. I work until uh, about like eight p.m. So it's after that that I I get out of the house. I run around. I I do my errands real quick before stores close. I get my exercise. I walk Winnie, uh, and uh, so yeah, it's uh, we, oh, yeah. we meet we meet in the evenings. Great to know. I mean, that's how romantic. Having a having a date, you know, in the in the in the morning or in the afternoon at you know nighttime is is the time for romance. I think nighttime is the the right time, as they say, and that rhymes. <laughs> That's why you know it's true. <laughs> I'm saying <laughs> if, it's, if it rhymes, it's true. It's what I've always said. <laughs> Clear. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go talk to some other people. I'll leave Augustine to to you. <laughs> My dearest Teddy, it, it seems as though you are on the correct course. If anything, I am 
enthralled by this saga you have woven in f before me. I would have a great interest in meeting her at some point, perhaps a double date. Uh, re casually reaches over and pulls Excava over, uh, huh? giving, her, giving her the look uh. of, shut up and play along. <laughs> Darby o openly laughing. I, I don't. <laughs> Augustine, could you please give me a manipulation plus subterfuge roll? Manipulation. I would resist. Your, what do I roll? <laughs> your subterfuge. Um, you can just straight up say, I'm not his girlfriend, and that would ruin this. But Yeah, I'm not. Oh, okay. Well, then you just... <laughs> and, and I don't know this creature. Well, how about this? Uh, Augustine, go ahead and give me... Since she said that, we'll say <laughs> difficulty nine. But your subterfuge specialty is impeccable lies. So you could use your specialty for so this. So is mine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so manipulation I'm rolling plus eight. subterfuge. You have a All double right. specialty. Persuasion and impeccable lies. So that is eight dice. Difficulty nine to see if you can overcome All right. uh, Excava's lack of cooperation. Uh, can, since I have a specialization, can I burn a blood to no, empower it just this makes somehow? Tens, tens count okay. double. Okay, okay. So eight dice. I didn't realize you wanted this so badly. <laughs> Let's see. Come on, come on, come on! Big money, big money. Uh, oh, there's a one. There's a ten. One, I two. Think that's I think that's big. one success. There's a ten and there's a one. So I think for you, that counts as two successes for the 10. And then the one takes one of those away. So you got, right. you got one success, which barely convinces Teddy. Uh, he says, oh, well, she's uh, quite the, the joker. That's that's nice. Uh, uh, cool. Uh, uh, nice. Nice to meet you. I'm, I'm Teddy Linkletter. I genuinely do not remember if our characters were introduced to each other before. <laughs> I don't think so. uh, hi, I, I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> I leave. <laughs> the actual laughter. Darby <laughs> thinks this is all hilarious. Uh, and, uh, I... <laughs> her sense of humor is the most attractive thing about her. Uh, I don't uh, date people. Uh, period. End of sense. <laughs> Fun fact: Her name is actually leaving. Just uh, a happy coincidence. Uh, <laughs> happy, huh? <laughs> but indeed, I would be uh, most interested in accompanying you on a double date to provide any <laughs> services of charisma I might offer to you as my best friend. S services of charisma. <laughs> Invariably. Um, is is that? Uh, I'm sorry. I I don't know all of the slang. Is is that a euphemism for something? Yes, he's. I'm back now. Yes, he's going to service your charisma. <laughs> just open oh. up the hood and just turn some wrenches. <laughs> <laughs> Beep boop, beep boop. Spo spoken like a true mechanic, Andy. <laughs> Let's I must have this. gotten myself quite drunk because I'm afraid <laughs> I'm I'm not making any sense of, of any of this. But uh yeah, I look forward to uh the continuing adventures of Teddy and Augustine. Indubitably, and I uh I grab the nearest drink, what regardless of whether or not it's mine, and and put the liquid in my mouth in and it. try and subtly let it seep out the corners of my mouth hole without him noticing. <laughs> he is absorbed with ordering his own drink. He does not notice. Several other people nearby do notice <laughs> and shrug it off. That guy's got a drinking problem. <laughs> I informed the bartender oh, that uh, Teddy's drinks and subsequent uh, transportation home are to be put on the house account. And then uh, wish him Marsha's a... the, the nearest person there, and she says, will you come and, and pay for that? Can you give us cash? Like, Absolutely. Like for that, so we're not covering that? Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's the policy that that's going to work out great for us if people aren't getting free things. Thanks. Oh yeah, God. yeah, we'll set that up. 
she looks just constantly stressed. It. Well, Dar- and Dar- Darby like wait calls her over, and, and is just like, actually, uh, once you get that guy's credit card, everything's on him for for uh, just forever. Just keep, just keep putting it on, put, put it on his tab. Tr- trust me. I don't like the whole budget for the whole bar. Just put it, put it on his tab. I swear to God, he'll never notice. <laughs> seriously, seriously. This is me telling you person to person. Do ne- never worry about money again. Run this place the way you need to run it and just put every single thing on his card. I swear to God. <laughs> that's so believable Are you need, like use dominate to try and <laughs> no no i'm just trying to i'm just trying to persuade her to talk her into it it's it's free money i'm an owner i'm telling you this is how we all uh decided to pay for it on his on his guy he's got the you know the joint account the joint account she is she's <laughs> making a drink and not even look she's like peeling stuff and muddling stuff and like like looking at you not breaking eye contact and just kind of like nods dismissively and then turns like D- darby does not tolerate being talked to it's like hey 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 look here infinite oh money God, <laughs> uh the band while oh, all this snap. is happening is, is the band still playing or are they between songs or is there like uh, a- they're absolutely still playing they're still on the volcano song <laughs> they're talking about very calderas song. and basalts and just like the anatomy of it's volcanoes. like a full lecture <laughs> they're going through a list of historically good? significant uh uh volcanoes the bassist has pulled a a chalkboard on to the stage <laughs> it's a whiteboard but yeah the, like the vinegar and the baking soda or whatever. <laughs> half the crowd <laughs> Half the crowd is taking notes. When I was like, okay, yeah. like, yes, yes, professor, keep going. All, all, of, the all of the all of the fans are just students that are getting they extra have credit a test for this. Tomorrow. That's right, they're getting extra credit. Yeah, looking at the crowd, do I see that everyone has drinks in hand, or like more of them have drinks than don't? Not everybody. In fact, a lot of the people close to the stage that look like the college crowd, um, most of them don't have drinks. Most of them are dancing, going like, woo, and don't seem to have a free hand for a drink. As the song concludes, uh, sh- you assume it does. How long is the song? <laughs> is this their one hit? When the, when the Volcano song concludes, um, I... <laughs> strut on the stage and gregariously request the microphone what? and look out to the crowd <laughs> oh no <laughs> good patrons of this fine establishment please I do not know that enjoy man. a beverage on the house it trust me it will make the volcanoes make more sense be my guest and then give the microphone back I look over at Marsha and give her finger guns like she should know what's up. Uh, and then I proceed to find the person who looks like they are most likely to take a social cue and wink at them and gesture my head towards the back door. Like the Fonz? What? Like what? Like what? what's happening? Like you're trying to get a groupie? Like you're trying to beckon like, someone? Hey. Yes. Why? Oh, okay. That's not how that works. So this is what happens. Uh, Dr. Rock seems very cheerful. He's uh, confused, but like, uh, like happy about someone coming up and uh, not being terrible. Uh, He lets you use the microphone. Uh, After you're done, he's like, you hear that, everybody? Drinks are on this guy. And you look back at the bar and you see Marsha like acknowledges what you're saying, but looks like even more stressed about it. She's like, we got to get, we, we got to keep track, get notepads, get notepads. We got to, we got to write down everything. And then we got to settle it up with that fucking nice guy um, uh, tomorrow. And she's, she's handling it. And uh, you look out at <laughs> your, your, you want to, grab someone who's like dancing who's like right in front of the stage he wanted to do it with his eyes only like with a look yeah. what, he so wanted wait, to just like, like hey like get somebody like, off the crowd like pin them to the wall with his gaze and be like oh follow me outside you, you see like, that this cool ass power move his character I've got would do. Bucks, whatever like. the opposite of dread gaze is 
You <laughs> see one guy who's right up at in the front row, right up against the stage. He's wearing a big shirt that says Geology Rocks. And he has been yelling louder than anyone else. And he's one of the the few people who has like cups in his hands. They are empty cups. He's been just like slamming drinks, but he's still just like reflexively holding on to them and going like, yeah. <laughs> and it when he hears that drinks are on the house, he looks at you and like his jaw drops and he's like, this is the best night of my life. You do. <laughs> you, dude. You. You, dude. And he's the most obvious person who's like fixated on you and like into you right now teddy notwithstanding all good yeah no i i wink at him and i gesture towards the back door and kind of like motion for him to follow me he he as if he's hypnotized he immediately does it he mutters to someone else like i guess i was getting drinks first these fuckers you gonna have to get behind me and uh there is uh uh, around the side of the stage there's a hallway that goes back to the stairs that take you downstairs to the basement where that conference room with all the weapons were do you like lead him down there i don't want to like give away the <laughs> game on that room but like somewhere away from the public eye where i can feed and then leave him there's also like a back door and yeah uh, like a loading dock and an alley with a dumpster yeah yeah i'm i'd, I'd take him out back there it is uninhabited. There's no one back there. Sweet. I assume you uh, you feed from him. Yeah, I don't. I don't murder him because it's too close to Yo, you. You don't know that yet. <laughs> you, okay, are you are hungry. I am hungry. Uh, how much blood can I take before it actually like mortally jeopardizes him? Officially. Uh, two points is inconsequential. Three is kind of borderline. I'm comfortable just kind of standardizing it as like three. You can take three blood points from a mortal, and it, uh, it we'll call it inconsequential. Every blood point removes uh, a health level from the mortal, but um, in a way that they can easily rebound from. Uh, if you take more than three, then there will be consequences for. For him, for his health. Okay. Um, I'm just going to take... Uh, what? Would two make him pass out in his current drunken state? Um, I would say, yeah. If you took three, he would definitely <laughs> pass out. If you took two, he would not. He would be fine. I'm going to take three and then kind of like <laughs> n nudge him to the far end of the dumpster and leave the cups next to him like he just had too many. <laughs> okay. So you intend... To take only three. Put him yes. in the dumpster. Now please make a self-control roll to see if you hunger frenzy and oh. drain all of this guy's blood because you're so dang hungry. You uh, have two self-control dots. So. Awesome self-control. What's uh what is this? Six? Difficulty six? Taste of blood when hungry. Yeah, that is six. Okay. Come on. Woo! You made it. I did not kill a dude I would feel weirdly bad about murdering. Was it? Is this the first time that a hungry yes. feeding did not result in a in a frenzy? Definitely, I definitely think it's the first time Augustine hasn't killed someone. <laughs> <laughs> Just in general. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it, it was the geography of rocks and the guy genuinely having a good time that, like, for some reason sparked some fucking empathy and made him like... I'm going to feel real shitty if I accidentally kill the hell out of this guy. Uh, but yeah, no, so I take three, and uh, I, I leave him next to the dumpster uh, with his two cups there, and I guess before end, like exiting the situation, I go to the bar and buy a couple of unopened beers, and I take him out there and kind of like leave him within arm's reach for whenever he wakes up, I guess. Being Everything a real gent good. about this. Okay. That is very charitable of you. It's like he doesn't know what to do when they wake up. He's never had this happen before. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, yeah, you shouldn't have to worry pillow. about it. 
<laughs> so at this point, it is uh, about 2 a.m. And we're not that far off from uh, from Last Call. The band is wrapping up. And we're a few hours off from Sunrise. Darby's itching for a fight. I mean, he's still trying. He's like jacked up on evil death soul. And it's just like, let's fucking go. He's definitely like shattered a couple of glasses with his tongue. Just like, <laughs> just like, like while what? he's drinking. Yeah. Just like, ah, fuck. I'm like, let's go. Let's fight some shit. I am ready. Two down, two to go. Them? Let's it's like box. Let's, it's dark. I don't know. Shit. The security is definitely like, like keeping an eye on Darby. I am at this point extremely inebriated. And I have a bottle of wine that is also just oh. full of blood. And no one knows how I got it. <laughs> okay. I, I did want to mention uh, Augustine is also inebriated. Oh, cool. Um, I'm not, is it possible for me to just, like, default oh, cool. the last, all the remaining time until last call, like, trying to play up on the the social goodwill I have mer- netted from people for buying drinks and, like, making a small pile of unconscious bodies out back until I'm full of blood? <laughs> can but, I that say that I do? Can I kind just of join it. in on this? <laughs> because I also need to feed. Uh, you do. Um, okay, so... But I also like to say, instead of directly feeding, I went through the trouble of putting a bunch of blood in a wine bottle so I can saunter around with it around the bar that I own. (laughs) Where did that blood come from? (laughs) The power of imagination. The the Delacroix... the Delacroix I kind private of want to reserve. Someone to fight Darby. <laughs> oh shit! Well, let's let's resolve That's this a bad plan. Let's resolve this real quick. Archibald and <laughs> Augustine. I won't give you uh, any more free hunting, but tell me what dice pool you were using to get victims. I would have been using charisma, just like same kind of thing as him. Where, but instead of being Are like, you hey, Elvins, but famous. instead of like, yeah, I would have been like talking to some of these fellow intellectuals and actually i probably would have collected a a small posse of people taken them into a back room and enamored them by giving an impromptu lecture like did you know that like the field of geology is surprisingly ethnocentric and classist let me explain <laughs> in my 100 percent. this is what i've done <laughs> I've even attracted one of the band members. They no longer have a bassist because he <laughs> wants to hear it. Why lecture. does this mix sound hollow? Turn the bass up. So we'll say charisma plus academics for that. And uh, Augustine, what is oh, your... Oh, I was going to say my teaching specialty. Uh, I was I just going to use expression. Charisma and manipulation. Yeah, use... and... yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, it's your turn. Uh, what What is your hunting strategy? Just charisma and manipulation. Really, really playing up the fact that I bought everyone drinks Oof. and I'm kind of like flaunting it a little bit. Uh, and generally like, wasn't that a cool thing I did? And uh, see if I can like manipulate people into thinking I'm asking them for sexual favors at, behind the venue before rendering them unconscious. So I think that that sounds like charisma and empathy to me if you agree please roll seven dice copy so mine did not go great oh actually. yeah you botched yeah <laughs> no, no. zero <laughs> successes and a botch oh, so i'm going hungry tonight and three successes for augustine you get three more blood you successfully do that twice because i think that's what you Express was your intention. I'll let you get a twofer. So you get a total of six blood. Archibald, how you start the conversation? So I am just in the back of the crowd trying to yell about, like, lecture loudly about leftist politics as it pertains to geology. 
and no one can understand what I'm saying. And they a few just, people they... can understand what, what you're saying because you have that <laughs> that lecturer's voice, and uh, <laughs> someone like... someone in the crowd of of academics who who looks like kind of kind of popular, like an attractive person that everyone like is immediately like looking at, listening to, turns around and and points at you and says. This guy's trying to make shit political. We don't we don't want that kind of vibe. No one pay attention to this guy or go anywhere with him tonight, okay? <laughs> just, and everyone's like, wrecked. yeah, and turns back to the band. <laughs> defeated. He's not buying anyone any drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Utterly defeated. I just go, like, saunter off to a corner and just sit sadly and start crying because my best friend died today. <laughs> Uh, so just to be clear, <laughs> I am inebriated because the people from whom I'm feeding were drunk, right? That is uh, how it works. That's the, okay. that's the only way you can get inebriated. So, as I lay down the last person, the third person in this, uh, now kind of orgy-looking pile of bodies by the dumpster, um... Uh... Yeah, dumpster orgy, sure. Episode title. In my inebriated uh, state, I look down and I'm gonna make a perception roll. I drunkenly state that I observed a pattern. Did you? <laughs> it's my it's my specialty for perception. What? And then I and, and then I walk back was... in. The repeated what? behavior I'm... of <laughs> the repeated behavior of knock, er, drinking their blood, knocking them out, and putting them by a dumpster. I'm so confused. <laughs> Wait, did you get a derangement that I forgot about? No, no. What? Uh, what is? I'm so confused. My specialty in perception is pattern recognition. I just thought it was a dumb thing to be like, I drained three people using the same thing all three times, and now I'm drunk. So I looked down, I'm like, ha, that's a pattern, and then walked back in. <laughs> that's it. That's that's that whole thing. You do remember the thing that you just did. Yes. Successfully. Mm-hmm, yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is, uh, it's, it's nearing last call. It, it feels like the end of the night. Um, do you guys head back to Darby Manor to catch oh, some yeah. Z's? I mean, is, yeah, I is Darby going to straight up just that. punch somebody to provoke a fight before we leave? Oh, yeah. We need to resolve oh, yeah. his bloodlust. <laughs> I mean, he, he doesn't have a... He's just like, he thinks that he's very he's combat ready right now and thinks that we should go do some shit. And if he can't convince anybody, he's not going to like go do it by himself. So he's just like muttering to himself, probably calling everybody a bunch of pussies. Darby, I know that you're never supposed to go with anyone to a second location. However, (laughs) would you perhaps like to join me at a second location and perhaps fight someone at not the bar that we own? Well, yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm ready to go. I'm like jacked up. Well, Darby, I've talked to some of the staff, and it's time to head to the rival bar across the street. Darby, we're going Wait, to Brothers. Oh, oh my no. God. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where we should leave it off for this session. We're right at right at two hours. I will leave it up to you, Graham, to decide if if Brothers is in fact a thing in this universe. Brothers is in fact. <laughs> bar right across the street with a oh, very different crowd beautiful than club wonderland which is definitely yeah. not a parallel for a, a real extant bar can't think of anything can't think of anything that would be there then um <laughs> <laughs> so uh experience points Archibald, you have five of those to spend. Do you have any experience point spending intentions? I'm going to keep saving them. I'm, I'm being frugal. Oh, key Me too. Augustine, uh, tomorrow you could have uh, the opportunity to uh, learn thaumaturgy from the other Tremere. They have offered that thing where instead of taking quite a while to teach someone like to take a week to, to learn a thaumaturgical power, which is what you're doing, teaching Elizabeth, the green path, they can give you a crash course and teach it to you in just one day, but it might scramble your mind, but you'll 
you know, potentially get the first level of a new path uh, pretty quick. Um, also, uh, you have the option of uh, spontaneously manifesting a secondary fifth level green path power. Okay. Or you could do whatever. But are you uh, just going to hang on to your 24 experience points for now? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. That's a lot. <laughs> I've been sitting on a bank of really, 20 for here. a long time. Um, I, man, I've been doing a bunch of charisma stuff today. How many points would it cost me to bump up to my fourth dot of charisma? 12 points. Uh, well, nope. That's not going to be it. Yeah, those attributes are pricey. I don't want to be lame and hold, but like, I don't see anything that I did today that makes sense to add points in. I guess I could have learned quite a bit from... Performance? It... If I were you, I would save it for Thaumaturgy, because Thaumaturgy is dope. And there's yeah a bunch... It's also okay. fitting to get real expensive if you get high level thaumaturgy. All your XP will be like gone. True. Um, what what was the limitation we ran into last session that would require me to be seventh generation? You cannot get the sixth dot of anything unless if you are at least seventh, at most seventh generation. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that in the back of my mind for the next horseman. And uh, sneaky sprint, diablerize. Um, yeah, I'll hold. I'll hold. Getting real <laughs> cocky about that. Yeah, Excavo wants more. Coddle gang. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Darby, you have 11 points. And last I heard, you were saving up, wanting to save up to 16 to get a fifth dot of dexterity. Yeah, I think... I. I I think I'm actually interested in saving up to 20 and getting my sixth dot of strength. You could do that. Jeez, yeah, you can do that. Oh, my God. Fuck. All right. Tell me again, tell me again, like, what is the baseline level of superhuman uh, that six dots of strength equates to? Six dots is something that a human would not be able to achieve without some supernatural thing happening. Five dots is like the maximum theoretically possible for a normal human. Like the strongest human on earth has five dots and six dots is noticeably stronger than the strongest human on earth. Uh, Yep. Sick. So yeah, I think I'm saving up nine points for some of that sweet action. It's it's the only thing I have five dots in. So uh, I can't really push the boundaries of my generation in any other area. So like none of my disciplines are really that high of a level. So yeah, I think the, I think the coolest way to flex my Diablery is just to save up and buy a level six thing. Cause I can. Cool. Uh, Excavo, you have six like points. Six. I, I have no idea what I want. I'm just going to hold on to them. Okay. And if you Auto think game. of if you think of something between sessions, uh, you can let me know what that is. Great session, all guys. Later. Love y'all. Have a good night. Take it easy.